we're going to figure out the four quantum numbers for the 19th electron in copper. And I already want your, uh, your spidey senses to be tingling for copper because the electron configuration of copper is different from what you expect. Now, first, I'm gonna point out copper is here in group 11. It is one extra D electron shy of having a full D subshell. But let's get the full electron configuration for copper anyways. We have to count all the way to there through the periodic table. These first two electrons represent 1s2. The next two electrons represent 2s2. Over here, the next six are 2p6. These are 3s2, 3p6. And here's where it gets different. I'm gonna do this raw, like incorrectly to start. This is 4s2, and then this is 3d9. But you have to remember that for neutral copper, when you, well, any atom really, d9 will form d10, at the expense of one of the earlier S's. So this, the electron configuration for neutral copper is 4S1, 3D10. Now we have to figure out which of these is the 19th electron. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 that one electron is the 19th electron. Now, to figure out its quantum numbers, we're gonna do a little more work. Step one, n, the principal quantum number, is this number on the orbital label. n equals four, done. L is also given to you by the letter. S represents L equals zero, P, happens to represent L equals one, D is L equals two, F, which we have none of here, is L equals three, and it goes on like that alphabetically. But 4S, knowing that the 19th electron is 4S, gives us these two numbers right off the bat. Now, what is ML? Well, if ML, the, val the allowed values of ML are always based off of the L that you're dealing with. When L is zero, ML is allowed to be anything from negative zero up to positive zero. But actually both of those are zero. So there's no other real choice here for ML. I will point out that if L was equal to two, then your choices for ML would have been negative two, negative one, zero, one and two. And that happens to be why a D subshell can hold 10 electrons. Each of these orbitals is represented by a different ML, all in a D subshell where L equals two. But that doesn't apply to this question. We, if L is zero, ML has to be zero. After all, an S subshell can only hold two electrons. So ML equals zero is your only choice. And then you're being asked about the final quantum number MS. Now, I don't have a rule for whether or not you use plus a half, an up electron as the uh, first electron in the orbital, or if your teacher, professor, tells you to do a down or negative a half spin to start with, you're gonna to have to base that off of whatever your teacher's examples have been. If your teacher does this kind of arrow to start with in an orbital, use plus a half. If your teacher starts with a down arrow, use minus a half, because that's probably what they're expecting. But in my world, you should be allowed to use either plus a half or minus a half for that 19th electron. Anyways, the point is you can figure out the four quantum numbers for any electron in an atom by getting yourself the full electron configuration, counting up to see where your nth electron is, in our case, 19th. The orbital that, or the subshell that it's in gives you both n and l. Then you can figure out ml by how many of the electrons you, you've already used up. 
inside your subshell. Thanks for being with me and best of luck.